Hello and welcome. Today we are doing an RV upgrade. Specifically, we're going to be swapping out the two lead acid batteries in my Winnebago Navion with this guy, the Epoch 12 volt 300 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Now this will be of particular interest to Winnebago Navion or VIEW owners, but most of the material will be just as relevant for anybody looking to upgrade from lead acid batteries to lithium batteries in their RV. Now this is one of several videos I'll be posting on this topic. Check out the channel where you'll also find a full review of the battery as well as some other material around this particular topic. And of course remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications button so you can be informed when those videos post. Now before we get started, a couple of disclaimers, the first being that I am not in any way a certified or qualified expert on this particular topic. With this video, I'm simply looking to share my experience with anybody who's interested in the process. Secondly, the usual disclaimer, this video is not sponsored or paid for in any way. The battery was purchased with my own money and the opinions are entirely my own. Okay, so real quick before we get to the installation, if you are interested in the discussion on why I'm upgrading from lead acid to lithium batteries or why I chose this specific lithium battery, head over to the channel and check out this video where we discuss those in detail. And we also do some comparison testing pre-install and post-install so we can get a better idea of what benefit the lithium upgrade has actually given us. And I will also post a link to that specific video at the end of this one. One other thing, if you are interested in checking out details on the Epoch 300 ampere hour battery or any of the other products discussed during this video and the other one we just mentioned, I will also place links to those in the video description. Now, back to the installation. This is not a super long video, but I will still post the chapters up here. Hopefully those will also translate into the timeline of the video. So if you want to skip to a particular section, you can do that also. So with that all said, let's get to the installation. Now in the Navion, like a lot of motorhomes, the house battery compartment is located right here under the top step on the entryway. So let's pop the top on this thing and see what we have inside. Okay, inside our house battery compartment, you can see we have two batteries. Each one is a 12 volt, 105 amp hour battery. They are wired in parallel, so you can see here the connecting cable going from negative to negative and positive to positive, giving us a combined power of 210 amp hours. But of course, remember, this is a lead acid battery setup, so we only get to access 50% of that. So we have an available capacity of 105 amp hours. Now the wiring here looks a whole lot more complicated than it actually is. Basically, when you have batteries in parallel, the idea is to bring in the positive on one end of your battery bank and take the negative out of the other end of your battery bank. And that gives you a better balancing of the load through the different batteries. So you can see here on the left hand side, we have the lines going to the inverter. So we have our positive coming in here, going through a fuse and then connected to my right hand battery in this instance. The negative going to the inverter comes in then at the left hand battery. Over on the right hand side of the chamber, you can see some additional inputs, which are for the 12 volt system and I believe also for the alternator charging. So you can see here the live, the positive comes in through a fuse and connects to the left hand battery. And then the negatives for this part of the circuit connect to the right hand battery. Now, if you're replacing this with 
two lithium batteries. Obviously, you just need to replicate exactly the setup they have here. If, like I am, you're replacing it with a single battery, then it becomes very simple. You just plug in, of course, the positives to the positive terminal, the negatives to the negative terminal, and of course I'm not going to need the bridge cables here either. Now one issue you may have, regardless of whether you're putting in a single or multiple batteries, is the lengths of these cables. So in my instance, I'm not going to be able to connect these and this to the same terminal without some kind of extension. So I also bought a bus bar to connect those on as well. Okay, before we do anything here, I just want to reiterate, as I said previously, that I am not a certified or otherwise qualified expert in this area. I'm just a guy like you trying to do his own upgrades on his RV. If you're uncertain about any aspect of this, then please consult somebody who is an expert in this area. Now, before I get started, I'm obviously going to make sure that the shore power is disconnected. And also, it's a good idea to turn off the battery circuits so you ensure that you're not going to damage anything in the coach itself. Even with all that done, make sure that you do not short out the battery. That could cause damage to the battery. And of course, if you become the shorting of the battery, then you could cause some damage to yourself. So please take all necessary precautions. Okay, let's get these out of here and replace them with my lithium battery. Okay, so here we are. We now have the new battery installed. Uh, because it's quite a bit larger, uh, wider than the others, I actually had to take these fuse uh, retainers off in order to get it in there. Um, as I mentioned, I have everything on the negative side wired into a bus bar because there's no way they were all going to reach the single terminal. Obviously, I still have to do a little bit of work here to secure this somehow. Um, but it's all in. Now, of course, the physical installation is just one part of it. But we have to change some settings on the Xantrex inverter charger in order to update it to lithium batteries. We also have to do the same thing on the ZAMP solar charger to change it to lithium batteries so it provides the correct charging voltage. But uh, okay, let's go do that. Okay, so we have the battery installed in place under the step. Everything's closed up over there. Now, as far as supplying 12 volts to the coach, nothing else to be done. That's already taken care of. What we now have to take care of is to ensure that any charging sources are reconfigured for the lithium battery. Now, in my coach, we have three different charging sources. The first being the alternator. So whenever the engine is running, it's charging both the chassis battery and the house battery through the alternator. We have the inverter slash charger, which is actually down below, but there's a control panel here. This is a Xantrex XC2000 inverter charger. And we also have solar here. So we have a ZAMP Solar ZS30 solar charge controller. Now, as far as the alternator is concerned, this is handled by a device called the Master Vault Charge Pro. And based on what I've read in the manual and everything I've looked at online, this is automatically compatible with lithium batteries and doesn't require any reconfiguration. So that one we don't have to be concerned about. As far as our changes, we need to come in here and we need to change over the Xantrax XC2000 to be compatible with lithium batteries as well as the ZAMP solar charger. So let's go through that process now. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is change the battery type on the ZAMP solar charger. Now you can see I've actually already done it. You can see here at the bottom of the display it's already set to the lithium iron phosphate type battery. The way you change it though is by holding down battery type for three seconds. You can now cycle through the different battery types. 
until you get to the one you want. It will stay in that position when it goes back into the regular mode. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing on the Xantrex inverter charger. The way we do that is we hold down the OK button for three seconds until it enters the setting mode. We then go through, and I looked in the manual on this, all the way to parameter 20. Oh, which is there. And then we select that with OK. We're going to now select, cycle through them, gel, LFP, there's the one. And then we hit OK. So now we've selected LFP. Okay, so everything is installed, everything is now reconfigured for the lithium iron phosphate battery. Now to do some testing. Now I already did some testing, I don't want to bore you with all of it. I tested the solar panels, I tested running the engine, I tested running the generator and confirmed I was getting full charge in each of those cases. Now I'm plugged into shore power and I'm looking at the app here and I'll share this on the screen with you so you can see what I'm seeing. So you can see we're now charging at about 83 amps. Now 80 is the limit of the Xantrex controller so the rest is coming from the solar panels right now. So we should be fully charged in a little bit less than two hours at the current rate. So it looks like we are all good. Once this gets to 100%, I'm going to do some testing similar to what I did with the... Okay, so our installation is complete. Everything seems to be functioning as expected. Now, I know I just mentioned in that last section that we're going to do some testing, but that is going to be covered in the review video that I mentioned earlier on, and the link to that should be appearing somewhere down here on the screen any second. So I hope you found this video informative and useful. Please, if you have any questions, comments, or you wish to share your expertise or experience, please put that into the comments section and I will try to address that as I'm able to. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to hit the like button and also consider subscribing to the channel for a lot more videos on tech, travel, and leisure. Thank you for watching.